Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll show you how you can take better images with your Nokia 7 Plus. If you are new to my channel, I've made several videos about mobile photography as well as DSLR photography. I've given tips and tricks. So I've shared a lot of knowledge in those videos. Browse through my videos, you'll get some information. And in this particular video, I'm really excited to show you how you can get really awesome images using your Nokia 7 Plus. Uh, the most important thing that I liked about the Nokia 7 Plus is the focusing system. So they have given you really nice focusing system on the 7 Plus. It uh, just doesn't hunt at all, uh, gives you right focus at right points. So there won't be any issue of focusing while you are holding the Nokia 7 Plus. So that's the one important aspect I would say that I really liked about. And in this video, let's uh, look at what are the settings you need to change on this Nokia 7 Plus so that you get really awesome images. So let's get started with the video. So dear friends, this is the Nokia 7 Plus camera user interface and they have given you quite a number of settings here as you can see and you will be already knowing several settings uh, I hope. Uh, so let's take a look at the interesting settings that you can tweak to get some really good images. The first thing I am going to show you is the HDR because it is already here and it makes me easy to show you guys. So this is the HDR auto. As you can see, you can set it to auto, it decides on its own based on the sensor. And the other thing you want to do is to forcibly turn on the HDR. Uh, say that you have the shadows dark and you have some highlights which are blown up. That time you can uh, compensate the highlight as well as shadows by enabling this HDR. So HDR basically is a high dynamic range, you will be knowing already that because there are quite a number of videos about that. But what it does is, it gives you shades of black and shades of white so it covers basically every shade of black and white to compensate and give you some really detailed images that is why this hdr is uh, uh, really helpful in certain situations and really gives you that extra depth of field so this is how you can use the hdr you just turn on the hdr and just tap a picture and let's say let's turn off the hdr and take a picture as well so now you can see with hdr on and hdr off so let's turn off the HDR for now. So guys, the next interesting setting is the picture in picture mode. Now you have the single, which is the only rare camera that gets activated. You have the dual, that means you can capture the picture and half the frame, you can also be there in that particular picture. So that gives an interesting perspective and you, you can also tell that you were in that particular location, you were capturing the picture. So that way it's really interesting. The another thing is the picture in picture, wherein a short frame, small frame will be there at the corner of the picture so that uh, rear camera captures full image and you will be on the corner of the image so that's that way you can convey that you were in that location and you can also take the selfies of your friends and still you get the rear camera picture as well that way you can share your images and convey that you were at that particular location having some fun so that's the use of this picture in picture mode so the next setting is the beauty on and off so you can manually turn on the beauty mode and uh, you can increase or decrease the level so there are i think uh, four stops of beauty levels so you can manually turn on that say that you have some persons in the picture over here and you can use this beauty mode as well as capture the landscape so that way beauty mode helps the important setting lies inside this stripe mode so here you have live bokeh there is pro mode there is panorama and the normal take photo right now we are in photo mode we shall change to panorama if you want to capture panorama you can just start with this and as you can notice already here the other brands the other cameras offer panorama in the vertical fashion but nokia 7 plus is giving you to capture panorama in horizontal i think horizontal makes a lot of sense uh, so you have the horizontal panorama pictures so you can take it that way the next setting is the pro mode yes here's where everything gets interesting this is the pro mode from the nokia 7 plus as you can see you have got the auto white balance setting you have the manual to autofocus you have the shutter changing thing you have the iso you can also compensate the exposure value but uh, what you can do is to just to hold the shutter button and move left and here you have all those sliders. You can use this slider, get the perfect image you are looking for. For example, say that you are not uh, having a proper color over here and you are seeing some uh, different color that the camera sensor is recognizing and you want to change that color, auto white balance really helps you. See, you can just move like this and you get the daylight, you get the sunset. There are predetermined white balance, so you can change that and see which one gives the accurate color. 
for example if this shared mode is what I get the correct color so I just tap on the shutter button this way you can utilize the custom white balance fortunately you cannot change the number say in Vivo V9 and other uh, mobile smartphones you have the custom white balance wherein you can change the number and get accurate accurate colors of any picture you are taking but unfortunately Nokia 7 plus gives you just some preset modes you can change and uh, hope that you get the proper image so that's uh, quite a disappointing thing i would say for 25,526,000 rupees mobile the next setting you are seeing here is the focus so this is the manual you keep on moving the slider and it goes to infinity so this is the landscape image that we are trying to capture and here the infinity uh, focus will really help and gives you sharp image sometimes what happens is if it doesn't recognize or doesn't focus properly uh, where you wanted to make that focus it is not focusing properly what you can do is just go to swipe like this and you have this focusing method you just move it to infinity and capture the image this way you get really really sharp images every single time so this way you can use this manual to autofocus and even it helps in while you are capturing close-up and macro images say that you are capturing an image of a flower then what you can do is you can just keep it to uh, first stop over here and expect some really sharp images of the close-up shots so this way this manual to infinity focus really helps okay guys the next setting here is the ISO change unfortunately there is not quite a lot of setting that you can change with the ISO or the shutter speed but I would say that you leave it to auto it does great job but still for example at this particular location we are in here I am getting really darker images what I can do is to manually compensate the ISO as you can see if I keep this ISO to 200 I am getting really really bright image and accurate colors as well so this is the accurate lighting is what here but the camera decided to go the other way and the images are getting dark now that I have used the ISO to 200 and I am getting really good and accurate images so this way you can compensate you can increase the ISO ISO speed to 400 say and capture even extra bright light is what you get from changing these ISO setting so this is how you can compensate the ISO so the next setting you are seeing here is the shutter speed obviously shutter speed helps when there is some motion in the picture and you want to capture that you want to freeze the moment you can use this shutter speed uh, at that time what you have to do is to compensate the ISO you have to increase the ISO and as well as increase the shutter speed for example say that a person is uh, uh, moving over here some uh, kids are playing and you want to freeze their motion what you can do is to change the shutter speed to around 1 by uh, 500 or 1 by 200 uh, sort of that and also increase the ISO to 400 or 800 that way you can freeze the moment and get some really sharp images so that you won't miss anything in the frame and another thing another trick you can do is to keep the ISO to minimum number and increase the uh, shutter speed that means uh, uh, reduce the shutter speed that is what you get with the 4 second 2 seconds uh, and that way you can actually get some smooth silky moments of the waterfall and such things so keep the shutter speed to 2 second or 4 second you have to do some trial and error to get accurate images and keep the ISO to minimum number so that you get smooth and silky images this is the trick that we use a lot of time to get different type of images so that's how you can utilize the shutter speed and if you just bring it down to all the way uh, to down it will set to auto as you can see next interesting setting that i will show you here is the change in exposure value this is the exposure value plus or minus is what you are seeing you can compensate the darker and brighter images using this exposure value in this particular situation i am seeing that there is quite a little dark over here and the exposure is not properly set what I can do is swipe like this increase the exposure value to plus 1 or plus 2 depending on the situation and then capture the image so that way you get some really bright image make sure you are doing it properly and not increasing the values too much otherwise uh, the highlights will be very much blown up so this is how you compensate the exposure value on the Nokia 7 plus so the next setting as you can see here we have the live bokeh what it does basically is it recognizes a particular subject by itself and uh, the rest of the subject will be blurred so that you get a particular subject in proper focus uh, but I find it not so intuitive and not so working properly uh, because it doesn't quite recognize close up subjects properly and uh, it searches for the landscape pictures as this which is uh, quite a bummer I would say so the live bokeh doesn't work properly 
as intended so that's one disappointing thing and as you can see if i point out my watch here just to show you an example and i'm tapping to focus it is really really trying hard and not giving proper focus at all so it's a very disappointing thing that nokia hasn't implemented properly hopefully we get uh, some software update so that it wakes up properly so it is telling me it is too near although my um, my hand is very much stretched and i'm holding the camera over here it is really really trying hard i've also tried several other methods but it doesn't quite work live bokeh nokia fix this uh, live bokeh on the, uh, nokia 7 plus so that's quite a bummer here so last but not the least is the settings over here what you can do inside this is if you want to take burst shots that means if you just hold the shutter button and you'll take several images in uh, in a, just a second i think around 10 images is what you get if you just tap and hold that you can enable it from here this is the shutter control and the next one is the shutter sound if you want that shutter sound clicky sound you can enable from here and another thing to utilize is this grid mode so rule of thirds can be utilized from this grid mode if you just enable this what you get here is the grid mode that way you can really really uh, see that everything is according to the horizontal everything is level and get some really pro looking images so that is how you can utilize this grid uh, i suggest you enable this grid every single time and there is this uh, zoom mode here there is one x if you just tap and hold you get this slider and you can actually just move the slider upward like this and up to 10x zoom is what you get but this is just a digital image zoom that means just as you take this picture and you zoom it manually how you see how blurry you see is what this does so it doesn't really work but i would say up to 2x is what decent you can use and get some zoomed images as well so that's quite a nice thing that they have given so in some situations if you just want more zoom you can always have this up to 10x zoom so this is uh, how you get with the 10x zoom and this is how you get with the 2x zoom so as you can see how the zooming affects the image quality so another setting to change here is the watermark so this is how you can use the watermark and uh, get nokia size location and weather info attached to your image the next one is the mirror photos for front camera what it basically does is uh, if you are seeing some flipped images of yourself you can always disable that otherwise you can enable and take the mirror photos of yourself from the front camera so it affects the front camera the next one is the location tag so you can gps tag any of your picture and uh, make sure that uh, you have taken this image particularly when you uh, import that into the pc or your laptop that way you can uh, organize your pictures according to the location as well so that way it helps there is the data storage there is the resolution so you can change the resolution from 12 megapixel to uh, 8 megapixel and get the 16 is to 9 aspect ratio and you have the 4 is to 3 aspect ratio in 8 megapixel 2 megapixel so this varies and in order to cover the full frame that is 18 is to 9 you only have one option and that drastically reduces the image size to 8 megapixel which is uh, quite a disappointing thing i would say because you are capturing full size image and but still it is reduced to 8 megapixel so that's the quite a disappointing thing so if you want to utilize full resolution images you have the 12 megapixel at 4 is to 3 aspect ratio you can also change the resolution of the front camera here itself you have the 16 megapixel front camera you can change it to 12 megapixel and aspect ratio one so the another thing that i didn't like about is that they have not given you one is to one aspect ratio which a lot of other smartphones give you these days it really helps capture uh, images for social media so it will be very quick and you don't have to crop the images as well so that way it really helps but there is no one is to one aspect ratio nokia if you are watching this video implement that one is to one aspect ratio and also uh, tweak a little bit about that live bokeh so these are the settings that is available on the nokia 7 plus uh, i hope you like this video and inside if you just tap on this video mode what you have is the 4k ultra hd mode if you just tap on the settings you can change the resolution of the video here so you have the 4k ultra hd capture and there is no optical stabilization uh, so you get some wobbly little bit of shaky images i would say so and you have the 1080p 720p full hd at 18 to 9 aspect ratio as well this is a neat thing they have implemented because you get to capture 18 is to 9 full frame at full hd so that's uh, quite a good thing that they have given there is also slow motion which you can capture slow motion and get some really slow footages so you have the time lapse and there is the video mode itself another thing that you can notice over here is the 
uh, if you just go to the video mode what another thing you can notice here is the surround front and rear so all these microphones will be activated and it records some surrounding sound as well so that whenever you plug the headphone and uh, listen to your videos that you have captured uh, it really gives you surround depth of effect so whatever uh, sound you have in around uh, you so you can capture that really well you also have the option to activate the front microphone only so that if you are vlogging it really helps capture uh, your voice only and the rear microphone will be disabled you also have the option to enable the rear microphone so these are the options that is available on the nokia 7 plus i hope this video gave you some insight some information hit that like button guys see you all in the another one till then take care bye bye